I wanted to share one of the most powerful stories of love that we're describing, because I'm describing this amazing love. Well, one of the great stories uh, from the Sira that I think really conveys this is the story of one of the companions of the Prophet mm -hmm. named Julay Bib. If you don't know this story, I really hope that uh, you'll read into it more, but I'm going to share it with you here. Julay Bib was one of the companions who took, uh, who became Muslim uh, with the Ansar of Medina. And he, his name actually conveys a lot about him. Um, his name means literally small grown or even deformed. That's the way that it was, you know, he was named. Um, and why? Because he was actually quite small in stature, very frail, very thin. And some of the descriptions say that he was very unattractive as well. He actually looked... Uh, you know, uh, just not, not very appealing. And because of that, he was ostracized. He was teased a lot. He was also an orphan. So he had no lineage, no support, no family backing. And this was, you know, a, a time and a place where that, those things mattered. If you had at least family and lineage, you could be protected. So he had nothing. He had no money, no wealth, n n no features, no, no traits about him that anybody deemed worthy except for, of course, the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, he was, and this was, you know, prior to Islam, but he was uh, bullied so often that he actually um, was ostracized from the men of, of Medina, and he would take refuge and comfort with the women because they were actually compassionate towards him. That's how he was mistreated so poorly. So the, um, when he accepted Islam, the Prophet ﷺ, of course, saw in him qualities that were beautiful because he didn't look for, to the outward, right? This is the, the difference between having uh, the, the proper you know, sight because some, we can see, for example, right? We, we see things, but if you don't have uh, you know, the, the discernment to know what's truly of value and what's not, then you're not going to see things according to their true value. So the Prophet ﷺ saw people not for their outward ex appearance. He didn't judge people based on the way that they were dressed or their you know, status or their names. He looked at character and he looked at, he could penetrate between between, you know, from all of that and see into the to their soul. And so he saw Julay Biba as being very special and someone of immense worth to the point that he actually went to a very prominent family of Medina who had a daughter who she's not known, we don't know her name, but this woman, this young girl was very sought after. She, a lot of the Sahaba were, uh, she had many suitors. And so the family was a wealthy family and uh, she was quite stunningly beautiful. And the Prophet said, I imagine, here's a man who everybody looks at as being worthless, as nothing. And the Prophet said, um, chose to be his uh, representative, his advocate to this family. And he went up to uh, the, the father of this family and he said, I, I'm asking for your daughter's hand in marriage. And so he, of course, was so overjoyed because the, he thought it was the Prophet says, I'm asking for himself. And who better than the best of creation to hand his daughter over to? So he was like, he was so happy. And then the Prophet says, I'm told him, I'm actually not asking on my behalf. And as soon as he asked him, then who, you know, assuming that it must be another companion like Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Abu Bakr or Sayyidina Umar or one of the other, uh, you know, great companions. And he was told it was Julay Bib. He was shocked, but he didn't want to have bad adab with the Prophet said him. So he said, I need to ask her mother. Let, let me uh, consult with her. And he immediately went to her and he conveyed that this proposal had come. And she had the same initial reaction. Oh, the Prophet said, is asking for our daughter. How amazing. And he had to tell her, no, 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 no. He's not asking for himself. He's asking for someone else. Who? Julay Bib. And she began to scream hysterically. She was like, absolutely not. No way, no way. And Audhu Billah, she made some very um, egregious statements that were, uh, what she said was, was inappropriate, uh, swearing by Allah that she would never, ever, ever marry her daughter to Julebi because he was seen as so low and beneath her. Now, I want you to imagine this scene unfolding. You know, she's screaming, and her daughter, this beautiful girl who everybody is eyeing and vying for, she hears her mother screaming, comes and says, what's going on? And they tell her that the Prophet has asked for your hand for uh, Julay Bib. And this girl, mashallah, again, we don't know her name. Subhanallah, what a demonstration of love for the Prophet and trust 
in the Prophet Sallallahu this is true love. She immediately turned to her parents who were like, there's no way we're marrying you to him, don't worry. And she said, how could you go against the Prophet Sallallahu He would never wish anything wrong for me. He would never want anything but my khair for me. I will accept this proposal. Shocked, right? Everybody's, I mean, this is like, a huge shock to, to everyone that here is this girl who everybody's vying for and she's going to marry Julie Bib. But why did she do it? Because she had that love for the Prophet that she didn't question him. She didn't question that he really wanted her khair. Even if the, uh, you know, the, um, the, the optics didn't look like something that was good or favorable to other people. She knew in her heart of hearts that because it came from the Prophet ﷺ, it was worthy. SubhanAllah, they were married and they lived peacefully together until uh, Julaybib was uh, one of the companions in, in a battle. Again, it's not mentioned which one, but he was martyred. Now, this is where, SubhanAllah, we see... The story, I mean, just again, trying to imagine this scene unfolding because here's a man orphaned and we, we've described how people perceived him. But to the Prophet Sallallahu clearly he was of great importance to the point that during the battle or after the battle, the Prophet Sallallahu turned to his companions asking each one of them if they have found anyone missing, you know, from their family, from their uh, people, from their tribe. Did you find anyone missing? Is anyone missing amongst you? And they, would, they said so-and-so and so-and-so. He again asked, is there anyone missing amongst you? And they said, so-and-so. He then again is asking them, like, you know, again, eagerly trying to, to locate someone, right, of importance to him. And now he, he reveals it. And he says, after they've repeatedly said, uh, no, there isn't anybody, he says, what? But I am missing Julebib. In other words, you know, he's important to me. You may have found all these other people who are your family members, your people, but I'm missing someone very special to me. That's who this man, his rank was with the Prophet Sallallahu And so the companions began to search for him and they found that he had been martyred. There were seven bodies laying around him and the Prophet Sallallahu came heartbroken to see that he had been martyred. But of course, um, you know, he, he conveyed uh, that, that what had happened. He said that he had been martyred, these, that he had killed these seven, and then one of them must have uh, finally killed him. And then he said, and he said this beautifully, two to three times it's reported in the hadith. He said, Hadha minni wa ana minhu, hadha minni wa ana minhu. Repeating this so that every single person there saw what the Prophet was conveying, that you all, all of you at some point, thought of this man as nothing, but he is from me and I am from him, right? We are the same, in other words, we're the same. And he made sure to repeat it th two to three times. And then, because he was so small and so frail, Judebib as, as a person, the Prophet said him, picked him up by his own arms he didn't need anybody else. And if you've ever, uh, you know, been, been around a, a funeral procession or anything like that, you know it's not actually very, it's not easy to pick up uh, someone, but that's how small he was, that he was able to lift him and he placed him in, in the ground. He, he dug his grave, he buried him himself. Um, and, and that was, you know, the story that I think, to me anyway, of, um, one of many that conveys really love in so many different ways, so many forms of love, right? Because again, if you look at this beautiful um, sister, we don't know again her name, who is demonstrating to all of us that when you truly love and understand who the Prophet is, then you don't question his guidance.